Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Shrimad Bhagavatam Kinto 5 Chapter 19 Text 8 As translated with uh, commentaries by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta, Swami Srila Prabhupada Srila Prabhupada Kijan, Foundaracharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. So this is the prayers that are offered to Lord Ramachandra by the residents of Kim Purusha Varsa and the chief uh, personality there is Hanuman and these are his prayers so it's a continuation so this is Hanuman speaking therefore whether one is a demigod or a demon a man or a creature other than man such as beast or bird everyone should worship Lord Ramachandra Supreme Personality of Godhead who appears on this earth just like a human being. There's no need of great austerities or penances to worship the Lord. For me, for me, accepts even a small service offered by his devotee. Thus he is satisfied, and as soon as he is satisfied, the devotee is successful. Indeed, Lord Sri Ramachandra brought all the devotees of Ayodhya back home, back to Godhead, by Kunta. So in the previous verse, Hanuman made the point that what were his qualifications? He, he was born in, in monkey species. <laughs> and that his realization is, and his experience is, that simply by devotional service, the desire to to serve the Lord, devote with love, then the Lord reciprocates and reveals reveals his nature, reveals himself to such a a soul. And so what what are the qualifications? Is it education? Hanuman doesn't have that. Is it beauty? Hanuman says in the verse, my beautiful <laughs> monkey. <laughs> of course, Hanuman's a great devotee, so we can rest assured that he has a, a, an unusual, um, unusually attractive demeanor and appearance <clears throat> because of the um, spiritual potency that he's... Uh, that he embodies. And have I performed austerities? No, I live in the forest. S forest creatures. So what is the need for all of those things? <clears throat> if, I <clears throat> if I attain the lotus feet of Lord Ramachandra, and I don't have any of those qualifications. So he's continuing that theme. He says, there's no need of great austerities or penances to worship the Lord. From me, there's a, there's probably, it looks like a typographical error here. It most likely should read, instead of for me, it should read, from me, he accepts even a small service. Well, I don't know, that there's a typo in there, but the idea is he accepts even a small service offered by his devotee. Thus he's satisfied. And as soon as he's satisfied, the devotee is successful. <laughs> there used to be, a, it was an old song, this old popular song. Make someone happy, just one someone happy, and you will be happy too. <laughs> So who is that person to make happy? 
that one someone is Krishna. <laughs> Make Krishna happy. Just Krishna happy and you will be happy too. <laughs> so Anuman saying it's not difficult to make the Lord happy. Just a little bit of service. Hearing about him is service. Glorifying him, talking about him. That's service. Remembering him is service. Offering prayers is service. Worshiping his lotus feet is service. Making friends with him, that's service. Giving everything to the Lord, that's service. So. <laughs> Lord Ramachandra is Prabhupada's commentary. Lord Ramachandra is so kind and merciful to his devotees that he very easily, very easily satisfied by a little service rendered by anyone, human or not. This is the special advantage of worshiping Lord Ramachandra, and there is the same advantage in worshiping Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lord Krishna and Lord Ramachandra in the manner of Kshatriyas sometimes showed their mercy by killing Asuras. But Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu awarded love of God without difficulty even to the Asuras. So Lord Chaitanya actually awarded devotional service to the Asuras in that in his incarnation as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in his appearance and manifestation as Lord Krishna and Lord Ramachandra, he awarded liberation. But how merciful is Lord Chaitanya in that he awards actual devotional service, which means he gives himself. That's what devotional service means, is that the Lord himself personally is purchased by devotional service. So he gives himself. Like, it's one thing if someone's hungry and you give them food. It's another thing if someone's hungry and you sit, you bring them to your house and you sit down with them and you eat with them. That's a whole nother thing because then it's a very personal um, experience. So it's one thing to give someone liberation, but it's another thing to take them home with you. <laughs> So Lord Chaitanya, Krishna Chaitanya, he's actually taking the demons home with him. <laughs> Krishna, Lord Ramachandra, in their manifestation of Chaitanya's, they're killing the demons and giving them liberation. So that's Lord Chaitanya. All the incarnations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but especially Lord Ramachandra, Lord Krishna, and later Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, delivered many of the living entities present before them. Indeed, almost all of them. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is therefore represented in the six-armed form of Sadbuj Murti which is a combination of Lord Ramachandra, Lord Krishna, and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mm. So there's a connection there when the Lord manifests that form. Lord Chaitanya sometimes manifests that form of Sadbuj, six-armed form. Because Lord Ramachandra, Lord Krishna, and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu delivered many of the living entities present before them. The Prabhupada says, indeed, all of them. Hmm. The best purpose of human life can be fulfilled by worshipping the Sadbuj Murti, 
the form of the Lord with six arms, two arms of Ramachandra, two arms of Krishna, and two arms of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Beautiful form of the Lord. Beautiful form of the Lord. Mm. Satpuja is so attractive. The form of the Lord is so attractive. Mm. Text 9. Sukhdev Goswami continued. The glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead are inconceivable. He has appeared in the form of Naranarayan in the land of Bharata Varsa, at the place known as Badarik Ashram, to favor his devotees by teaching them religion, knowledge, renunciation, spiritual power, sense control, and freedom from false ego. He is advanced in the opulence of spiritual assets and he engages in executing austerity until the end of this millennium. This is the process of self-realization. So now we're looking at the different areas of Jambadweep and how the Lord is worshipped in the different areas by the different residents. So we were, the last few verses, Sukadeva Goswami was explaining about the residents of Kimpurusha Varsha and their worship of Lord Ramachandra, Hanuman being the chief uh, spokesman there, the chief devotee. Now, um, this is Bharata Varsa. And this, the whole earth planet is actually considered Bharata Varsa. It's named after Maharaj Bharata, Bharata Varsa. The whole planet is actually Bharata Varsa. And so, Nara Narayan is the form that's present here until the end of the millennium. Hmm. So Prabhupada is going to discuss about Bart, Bhartavarsa and Nara Narayan. Prabhupada's commentary, people in India may visit the temple of Nara Narayan at Badarik Ashram just to learn how the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his incarnation as Naranarayan engages in austerities to teach the people of the world how to achieve self-realization. So we're seeing austerities are very much uh, connected to na the incarnation of the Lord Naranarayan. He is exhibiting that, he's manifesting that uh, quality that of performing austerities. It is impossible to realize oneself simply by absorbing oneself in speculation and material activities, just by mental exercises. It's not possible to realize the self and simply by material activities, arranging and rearranging everything in the material world is also not doesn't, uh, self-realization cannot be reached that way either. One must be very serious about self-realization and the practice of austerity. You know, austerity, people don't like that word, austere, but austerity means controlling the senses, controlling the mind, and, um, voluntarily um, giving up uh, the activities that lead to more attachment to sense gratification. Become austere. Self-controlled. Unfortunately, the people of the Sage of Kali do not even know the meaning of austerity. <laughs> yeah, it's fast lane, <laughs> fast food, express lane, uh, fast. Don't even think about it, just grab it. Austerity, <laughs> self control. Anyway. Oh, 
lately there have been some more and more economic problems due to all the mismanagement of uh, the economics structure around the world by unscrupulous persons who are not qualified, obviously, to be in charge of any kind of economic oversight. <clears throat> and so the word austerity has appeared more and more in the, uh, on the telly, <laughs> television, the, uh, the way the um, government in Greece is going to try and get a gr grip on their runaway debt was to impose austerity on the population, They're going to be cutting back on services to the population, cutting back on uh, retirement pay and welfare activities, and be cutting back. Life become more difficult. Austerity. You know, we have uh, so much facility for uh, easy life. You're going to be more austere. So they're starting to understand about that word. It's coming up more now. And they don't like it. They violently uh, demonstrated against austerity. Mm -hmm. Millions of people came out into the streets to protest. We don't want austerity. Under these circumstances, the Lord has appeared as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to bestow upon the fallen souls the easiest method of self-realization, technically called Chaito Darpana Marjanam, cleansing the dirt from the core of one's heart. The method is extremely simple. Anyone can chant the glories, the glorious Krishna Sankirtan, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. In this age, there are different forms of so-called advanced scientific knowledge, such as anthropology, Marxism, Freudianism, Freudianism, nationalism, industrialism. But if we work very hard under their guidance, instead of adopting the process practiced by Narayan, we shall waste our valuable human form of life. Thus you will certainly be cheated and misled. Yeah. Yeah. So, to try to introduce this um, austerity for self-realization in this age, Kali Yuga, is not... Uh, going to be accepted by the people. So Lord Chaitanya has so mercifully given something that the people can do, and that is chant Hare Krishna. It's very simple. It's actually a sacrifice, and um, it's a form of austerity, because the tongue wants to talk so many other things. It doesn't want to chant Hare Krishna. The ear wants to hear so many other things, it doesn't want to hear Hare Krishna. But by performing that very simple austerity of chanting regularly a certain amount each day, then gradually a taste develops for Krishna. And the chanting becomes relishable, you want to chant more and more and more. It's the pleasure that's derived from serving the Lord, like Hanuman was saying previously, even a little service, the Lord accepts it. He's very pleased. It makes him happy. So by chanting Hare Krishna, to whatever degree a person can do, it makes the Lord happy. Hare Krishna. So his special mercy for this age, that he's accepting that service. 
advanced, this last sentence is, is interesting how it fits with this idea of austerity. One thing is people do uh, accept austerity in order to get become educated. They go to school for so many years, primary education and then secondary education and then higher education. It can go on for quite a while, a formal study of these different um, fields, areas of study for trying to um, make their life better and thinking that, you know, studying uh, industrialism, they'll become rich and, and improve the country's industry. Nationalism, oh, we make some political fervor and then our nation will become strong and have an advantage over other nations. And, and then psychologically you have Freud, oh, we'll get to the bottom of these psychological disturbances and what's making people unhappy, we can figure it out. Freud and Marxism, another kind of way to organize society. Anthropology, studying the old bones and broken pieces of pottery from past ages, try and figure out <laughs> history. So there's a lot of austerity involved in devoting oneself to these different fields of study. And then there's others, I mean, there's biology, there's genetics, there's, it goes on and on and on. <laughs> um, because the material energy is endlessly mutable, so there's always sciences and new sciences to d devote oneself to. The prophet says, we'll waste our valuable human life, human form, because we won't get the conclusion. And we'll still be subject to birth, death, old age, and disease. Because that is not the way to solve the real problems of life. These are material endeavors. So, Previously, Prabhupada's commentary on this was, it is impossible to realize oneself simply by absorbing oneself in speculation and material activities. So the type of austerity that is associated with Nara Narayan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is aimed at self-realization. And that austerity is hearing about the Lord, serving the Lord, uh, taking shelter of the Lord's representatives, like this. So Lord Chaitanya, he has made it very simple. He's appearing in um, the Kali Yuga to extend the mercy to the unlimited degree, really. <laughs> He's even taking the Asuras, the demon's home, <laughs> to be with him and associate with him in loving service. They, see, Jagai and Madhai, they were demons. They were very dangerous, despicable, horrible, horrible people. Jagai and Madhai, they would do anything to anyone to hurt them. They were horrible people. They were very dangerous. People used to run away when they would see them. They were, they were worse than wild animals. They were worse than beasts. And uh, Lord Ananda desired the Lord to deliver them, and he did. They actually became great saints, and they, I think it was Madhai, was given the specific service to construct Gorakund, a sacred place, a bathing gap for for the Lord, so the people could come there and get the Lord's mercy in the form of that bathing gap. <laughs> and the people of the time just overwhelmed with the extraordinary mercy of Krishna Chaitanya. He could deliver those people. Yamaraj had a list of their sinful activities 
that was as tall as a mountain. And they were destined to be cascaded down into the very lowest of species for an indeterminable amount of births. They were so sinful. I believe they had even killed a Brahmin, Brahmins, or who knows, rape, killing, stealing, setting people's houses on fire just because it was fun. I mean, they were horrible. <laughs> just horrible. Always intoxicated with uh, liquor. Always fighting. And they became totally purified and eligible to go back home, back to Godhead, and to go home with the Lord. Not just liberation, but actually go home. <laughs> and Naranarai and Rishi, I, I believe also there's a mention there of when Ajamil <clears throat> was um, old man, also quite sinful, um, A lot of stealing going on there, and who knows what other crimes um, <clears throat> attached to a prostitute. Uh, he had a small son playing, playing near his deathbed, and as the agents of Yamaraj appeared, quite frightening, to drag him, his subtle body, he was going to be leaving his gross body, his subtle body, he was going to be dragged by his subtle body to the court of Yamaraj so that his next destination could be determined. And he called out to his son, not to Krishna, but to his small son, whom he had named Narayan. <clears throat> he named his son Narayan, which, as in the Western cultures also, Judeo-Christian Judeo Western cultures, they name their children after uh, biblical names, Matthew, John, Timothy, <coughs> James, Mary, Rebecca, Sarah. So like that, it's because it's a reminder and it's by calling out the names of the devotees of the Lord, the Lord's please. <clears throat> so <clears throat> he named his small son Orion, a name of God, one of God's names. But God is not different from his name. So when Ajimil called out to his son, who was playing nearby, Orion, the representatives of the Lord, the Vishnu Dudas, had to go there. <clears throat> and intervened, say, well, I'm, I'm sorry about this, but he has uh, called out for the Lord, so you can't take him. It was, the, Vish the Yamadudas were flabbergasted. This man is so sinful. What do you mean we can't take him? He has to go. And he said, no, he can't. He called out for Narayan. That's how powerful the holy name is. So Ajamil was conscious, although he was very old and on the edge of death. He was very con he was conscious of all of this going on, and so his destination was not decided. It was remained undecided, so he was given a little more time in that body. And he immediately headed for Bhattarika Ashram to perform austerities for self-realization. And to meditate on the Lord Narayan. So <clears throat> It's another account of Naranarayan and Bhattarika Ashram. But that Naranarayan is non-different from Lord Chaitanya. 
It's like Lord Chaitanya is non different from Lord Jagannath. In his deity form, he's worshipped in the temple as Lord Jagannath. It's the same Krishna, just manifests in different forms. Is it, what is it? As they surrender to me, I reward them accordingly. So there are different ways to approach the Lord. Yes, different manifestations. Unlimited variety. Unlimited variegatedness. We see that unlimited variegatedness in the material world. No two snowflakes are the same. No two pebbles on the beach. No two human beings. No two daisies in the, in the field are the same. It's unlimited variety and in individualism. Uniqueness. Everywhere we see uniqueness. It's one of the characteristics of the Lord. He's is unlimited. So his manifestations are also unlimited. The, the distinction is a different type of energy. His manifestations materially, they're temporary. They have a beginning and an end. So there's birth and death beginning and an end, endlessly mutable, always changing. There's no permanence in any of the forms that appear in the material energy. But in the spiritual energy, he's also unlimited. The variety is unlimited, but the energy is different. It's a different type of energy. There's no beginning, there's no end. It's unlimited. And everything's going on simultaneously. <laughs> and ever increasing, ever expanding. But there's no cessation. The Lord is uh, unlimited. That's the difference in spiritual energy and the material energy. And full of bliss, full of knowledge, eternal. I mean, <laughs> so 